Awesome. So we are live. Thank you all for joining us here today. I am super excited to, to just invite one of our uh, many guests here as we kind of do these weekly webinar series here for us. Uh, we, we're always interviewing a, a, a guest that is far smarter and brighter than I am uh, to these and gathering some information to help you and your business to kind of get to the next level. So i um, super excited to have you, Lester. Here with me, I'll give you a formal introduction in a second, but just a reminder is we were, we're doing a uh, Q&A as we're going through here. So if you have questions for Lester along the way, we'll try to get to those even uh, throughout this webinar or at the end of the webinar here too. And if we don't get to your question, we'll shoot you an email um, and get back to you there too. But we're super excited uh, to kind of dive into this topic here with us um, today. Lester, I appreciate you joining us. Um, I'm in Minnesota. Um, so always fun weather where I'm at. Uh, Lester, where are you joining uh, throughout the country here? Uh, Central New Jersey, so east coast of the country. Um, we got some, it's cold, it's, it's winter, but it's not too bad. We've been uh, pretty lucky with the weather this year. So um, yeah. yeah. After the crazy weather throughout the entire country. So um, that's that's awesome. So it's yeah, really we, warm yeah. or really cold or lots of snow or not very much snow. It's been pretty crazy this year. Yeah, we we usually tend to get that crazy weather, but I think we gave it to everybody else. So it's nice not to there have you it go. the season. So we can thank you for it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, we'll dive right in. Um, just a little about me. I, I'm, my name is Sean Connors. I'm the CEO and founder of Contractor Appointments. We do lead generation on a revenue share partnership with the contractors on our platform. We've got about 290 contractors we work with and, and growing. So, um, yeah, we're, we're super excited to, to kind of additionally add value through these webinar series, which is, in, like I said, interviewing smart people within the industry for, for it to just improve the industry as a whole. So um, Lester, you are working, uh, obviously you're with, with Job Progress, but with Leap and you, you've got the Leap Job Progress, you know, you got the Job Progress hat on, the Leap sweatshirt on here, but tell us about yourself personally, your kind of experience in the industry and just a little bit about Job Progress and, and Leap. Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Lester Morris here, uh, sales manager for the Job Progress product powered by Leap. Uh, we were acquired by Leap last year. Uh, we're just approaching our, our one year anniversary. It's been pretty awesome, to say the least. Um, but really just looking to carry on over what we started here at Job Progress. Job Progress is a business management software, uh, all in one encompassing product to really help a contractor organize, manage, and grow their business. Um, so I've been fortunate enough to be part of the beginning of job progress. Um, and now I get to manage a team of individuals that are really highly talented and motivated to help their contractors grow across the entire country. You know, and coming together with uh, Leap uh, has been phenomenal and really just kind of eye-opening on where we can really take this product and scale for our contractors. Yeah, that's really cool. So I, I, I will before even diving into these questions here, I'll dive a little deeper into your history there. So Lester, how did you get into even connected with job progress and that origin story? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've been in a number of contracting uh, trades uh, when I was younger. I moved in really to the IT staffing consulting world. Uh, and then I knew I wanted to get into selling a software. So uh, I think marrying those two brought me to job progress as far as uh, my interest. Um, and then when I came, to, you know, and met with the, the founder of job progress and saw really his product where he was at at that point in time and the targeted market, uh, it was a startup at that at that phase. And it, it, it really got me interested and excited to to really help the product blossom um, because I knew that I, you know, I, I knew all the pain points of a contractor and, you know, being organized and implementing software and the timing just seemed right. So taking that leap, if you will, into back into the contracting uh, world really allowed me to find a home uh, where I can take, you know, contracting trades, marrying it with software, getting people more organized really helping them grow their business. And it just became addictive from there. Uh, I was seeing guys really start off with two or three users and really started to grow their, their businesses and their families and uh, really coming back and really thanking me. Uh, I couldn't take all the credit, but 
you know, I, I was a starting point, I think, in that relationship for them. But watching them grow and blossom and really adapt uh, to a software and uh, really growing their business just really then it became addictive for me because I, I felt like a doctor, like I was helping people out. Right. So um, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. That uh, so, how long have you been with Job Progress? How what was that start with? Start yeah. on that side. Yeah, so 2017 is when I started with Job Progress. Um, they were around and definitely had some contractors using the platform. Uh, not many, but they were just starting to get their push um, in the marketplace. And again. Uh, really started to gain some momentum in 2018 and just never stopped from there. Uh, and where we're at today, I mean, to be honest, we're really only scratching the surface. So again, I started in 2017, but here I am in 2023 and I haven't really even scratched the surface, but made tremendous yeah. strides. Right. So uh, now teaming up with the entire um, entire team at leap uh, making that transition been very welcoming very eye-opening um and very helpful to be honest so really setting us up for success for for some time to come yeah that's awesome that's exciting so obviously from the SaaS world you know being in that portion of it and the contracting it's the mirroring of the two which you've been able to do here uh, of kind of that passion it sounds like so that's that's super excited it's super exciting to kind of see all the the progress uh that that job progress has done and leap has gone through and and growth overall if you haven't ex, you know, explored their two products here i encourage you to do so um those people on the call today so but let's let's dive in obviously we're going to dive into the meat of what we're kind of talking about here today so the topic that we're we're really tackling in today's webinar came from from you guys over at job progress was just kind of the five automated workflows here for more productive and profitable projects so um, as we dive into this stuff, the first question I had for you was just how do we tailor overall workflows to fit needs? So let's, let's talk about kind of high level from, you know, what, what most businesses are probably doing. Small businesses, they might have their own internal, like, you know, a pen and paper workflow or the, or the whole whiteboard, you know, white workflow mm -hmm. that they normally put a, a project through. Um, and let's even start just on the like basic, like sales to, you know, marketing and sales workflow, like what, um, let's, let's walk through that really quick. And just how do you tailor the workflow to, you know, to fit a business or, or really in today's, like what's necessary in today's, um, market to be able to do that. Yeah. Workflow. I mean, you know, I think in our world, everyone has a workflow. We wanted to give them the ability to customize that based off of the way they like to, you know, run their businesses. Um, and to be quite honest, you know, there's stages of your workflow, right? Because as a contractor, uh, when I first get into business, I'm going to have to wear a bunch of different hats. So my workflow might consist of three to five stages. I don't have a lot of people that can help me through those. So I need that automation happening. Uh, but inside of Job Progress, we give you the ability to customize your workflow so that as you grow, your workflow can grow with you. And you can be adding, you know, people, stages, tasks, automation along the way. Um, so just depending on what, you know, trade type you fall into, the workflow could be um, quite different. So, again, some guys starting off three to five stages works. A lot of folks doing like insurance work have 10 to 12 stages. And then there's just some contractors that are super diligent. They got 30 to 40 stages linear, right? Um, but then being able That's to, a good question is, is it was going to add it in here is, is, is this, it does job progress. Are you guys coming up with like, uh, is there a template that you kind of have like what's that comes out of the box with five, five stages that every business should have. There's kind of, there's best practices, right. And then there's like, every business is going to have, you know, four additional ones. If you're one trade or a different trade, or you're kind of focusing on those, is that, do you recommend like having different workflows for each trade or is it kind of one workflow across the company, you know, regardless of the trades that you're in? Yeah. So great, great question. Um, you know, when you come aboard with job progress, there's really kind of eight suggested stages that go into your workflow and then we can add and take some out from there. Um, because everyone really has somewhat of the same process. You get a lead, you got to go do an estimate, 
right? You got to follow up stage, then you got to sign contract and you got to schedule the job and so on and so forth. Uh, so there are eight suggested stages and then we can take some out or put some in from there. Um, you can only have one company workflow per se in job progress. So, you know, you might do windows, siding and doors. Um, so we pretty much have one workflow, but then we can have kind of uh, uh, progress boards, which are basically like a virtual whiteboard where we can create stages within the company workflow. Um, so th there are a number of ways to do that, but you can only have really one specific company workflow with those automations happening. Um, now, one other thing on top of that, we do have um, our multi-company account. So if I did Windows siding and doors and I wanted a complete separate workflow for each one of those trades, it's almost like Google where you can go on the upper right hand corner, uh, click down and get into a separate account. Um, now, those leads don't feed into each other, it just as Google, right? Um, but you can have separate workflows if needed. And, you know, you might have a separate QuickBooks attached. It's really kind of a separate entity. Um, so inside of Job Progress, there's multiple ways to do multiple things. So uh, we usually have you, have you covered once we're setting up your account. Yeah, well, I think... You know, I think even stepping back a, a minute um, here, of gonna, if you don't have a CRM system already, that's step one, right? Yeah. You, need, you need to be able to manage that outside of the paper that you, you know, uh, or kind of progress of a job and, and kind of handling out paper because that's where things get missed. The number right. one complaint within the home improvement industry, as we even talked about in the last webinar, is communication is the lack of communication about where the job is at, where the progress is at for the homeowner side of things and the, the actual person person purchasing your home services so um and honestly i don't think anyone's really tackled that or really solved that problem fully yet like there's sms and there's phone and all that kind of stuff but like if you don't have a crm system and you yeah. like have more than one project going at the same time like at the very least you need to have something that's holding you accountable to touch points with that customer. So it's not all in your head uh, or mm -hmm. on the piece of paper that could get lost. Right. <laughs> you got that right, Sean. And what we call that, we call that controlling the chaos in our world. Yeah. Right. Contractors come to us, you know, they're not doing like three projects in a year. They're doing, you know, they might start off by doing like 15 a year, but now they're doing 30 to a hundred. They're up to 200 jobs a year going through their workflow. We want to help them control the chaos. And that is through automations inside of your workflow, whether that's communicating with the homeowner, you know, text and email going out as you're moving through that workflow or tasks. Once people are up next, we, we really want to solve that issue of you not having to call them, text them, email them, and really tell them you're up next in, you know, uh, the pro progression of the job. So um, controlling the chaos through automation is definitely yep. why we're here. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think that's, so obviously step one, get a CRM system, but then I think as you're pointing out, like, I think as you're saying, like there's some companies with 12 steps, but there's some companies with 30 or 40 probably in your system mm -hmm. that are like those incremental steps of like, we ordered materials for your job today. Yep. We have a schedule. Not only do we order it, we, we got a confirmation back from the, you know, supplier that your orders are going to be delivered on some, this date, date of delivery has been, you know, it's like you, you get those incremental little progress reports there um, for both messaging a homeowner, but also internally, you know, where that status, that project, we actually heard back from, the, you know, the supplier that we confirmed, you know, delivery, or we've got, you know, crew has actually been scheduled for that, you know, each stage of those pieces are, are crucially important that we reached out to the homeowner and we confirmed the date of installation, um, you know, let alone on the for the beginning of that sales and marketing journey of that you called the customer, you've actually contacted the customer, you've moved them into an appointment set and scheduled, they've actually demoed and you've estimated the project. So I'm curious from your, like, just even with diving into that sales and marketing, like for sales perspective, like, are you, what are you seeing companies do that's been helpful to give kind of granular uh, reporting about how a, a, like a lead is being entered in the system into even their sales process. Like how, how are sales teams or companies that are growing and getting leads either any way kind of able to manage, you know, where their lead is at. Um, and, you know, even before they sign the paperwork. 
Right. So in your reporting tool, in, in our reporting tool, right, you definitely want to be able to, uh, we give you the ability to access custom fields. Okay. So, um, you know, we have a certain set of fields where we think you should be intaking this information, but every contractor is different. So utilizing our custom fields to put in those different um, ways you may be getting business, whether it's free or it's paid, um, that's going to give you the ability to generate reports on the back end, uh, put in your spend, whether it's Facebook or Angie's List or whatever it may be. Uh, maybe even, you know, a real estate agent, you know, this guy's giving you a, a lot of business. You want to put his name in there. We can also tie back costs associated to those leads so that whether, you know, it's free or it's paid, you won the job or they're in your pipeline, uh, you can easily get to these reports and then you can use those um, however you like to. So uh, I think using our um, custom resources, custom fields, and then giving that ability to report out on all this stuff, because we have a tremendous amount of contractors that come to us. They understand where their leads are coming in from, but they couldn't tell you down to the cent how much money they're making, losing, whatever the case may be. You want a, an all-in-one solution like Job Progress to really help you get to those touch points. Yeah, I think from my experience, even in the lead generation business, like even from when we started, we used to sign up every contractor who was like, I need leads. And they'd come to us asking for leads. And then they would, we'd find out, they'd sign up for leads. Then they, you know, two weeks later, they'd, go well these are these are garbage mm. and then we'd have uh, sign up the same number of companies and then half of them would go these are fantastic send me more Accountability. <laughs> and, and it was the well the problem was with both of those companies is that the companies that actually did really well we found out that they just had immediate sales out of the leads <laughs> so they thought they were doing really well but then over time maybe they didn't do well it was just the first few leads that they did really well with and then other companies, they got a few, they didn't do as well. They didn't sign any immediately, but then they came back six months later saying, well, we actually did get some project, you know, projects out of that right. because yeah. it, they weren't measuring the long tail or the long, like every individual lead and its sources and its long-term results in that. So I think the first step with any, any small business is you have to measure any source of leads that you're getting in the door, whether you're doing Facebook or Google or any of that kind of stuff to really manage you know, it, it came in here and maybe it took six months to get any sales out of it. Well, now, you know, even if you turned off that source, you can go go back to it and go, actually, it was worth the money that and the time and effort put into it. And now you can actually scale and run your business. So every big business has has to be able to do that attribution from here's your source. Here's the output. You have to get a return on your investment or it doesn't work. But also as your, your workflow um, in measuring every stage of the workflow, you might find that things are falling off right. at different stages too, uh, which is kind of goes back to your reporting. So it, it, it might actually have to do something with another portion of the entire business itself, right? Even as the last two years of excess leads have come in the door from every corner of the industry, because there's just been consumer demand, you might have had a ton of fall off in the production between signing the contract and actually producing the work because it took you know so long you know, to be able to even get the, the jobs built, um, you know, you had cancellations there too, but that's right. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep moving on here. The um, let's talk about templates. You know, I think the, you know, I, I think there's so much when it talks about workflow is that every company should have a workflow of every stage that that customer's journey is from entering your, your system, entering as a lead or a call or anything like that, all the way to the project being built. And honestly, it should be even past the build into getting them to be actually consumer advocates for you to get more referrals or additional projects from them. But the importance of kind of templates and accessing kind of commonly used items and line items out here or bundles, kind of talk, talk what that is in relation to job progress and like just overall kind of as companies grow with it, what's needed to kind of template right. to make sure that, you know, it's repeatable and scalable as companies kind of go from that 30 to 50 to a hundred, 200 projects. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another key thing about job progress. We want to reduce the redundancies and that's definitely through templates, right? Now we refer to templates as different things inside of job progress, but 
you know, you want automated emails going out, but you also want access to templates of emails that need to go out at any particular time. So having that suppository of emails where, you know, I'm in a truck, someone emails me and I just want to kick something back. I want to have access to all my email templates, right? Then when I'm doing my estimates, I want to have access to my macros. Macros are pre-saved bundles of line items commonly used. So if I'm doing the same type of job over and over and over that consists of the same 15 to 30 line items, I don't want to have to do that one by one. I want to go to a macro. It's a template, select it, and then be able to apply, um, be able to apply my measurements. And it's going to get me to my selling price. Um, also when I'm creating contracts, I don't want to have to put in body language, right? So per trade, I might have all these different snippets as we call them, which are pre-save body language that I need to pop in there, right? Legal language, this, that, and the third, uh, you don't want to sit there typing those out, having misspelled words, grammar errors. You just want to pop those in, be able to adjust those accordingly. Um, and then I'm good to go from there. So there's just a number of ways inside of job progress where templates are the way to go um, to, again, reduce those redundancies because we're doing the same things over and over and over. But, you know, the old way of doing it was just doing it all one by one from scratch all over again. That's a lot of time wasted uh, where we can be, you know, selling and doing our jobs much more effectively. So the access of all the templates inside of each and every facet of your business is it's a must. Well, I think the interesting thing is, as any business scales, I think that's one of the biggest issues within the home services space is why there hasn't been a, a lot of companies that have grown beyond that, you know, kind of small business aspect of things, because it requires a whole nother, another level of organization to get outside of the, you know, 50 jobs or 100 jobs, depending on your trade or, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's just too much to juggle and manage. And as soon as you start juggling too many balls, then, you know, something hits the floor. And I, I believe this industry is all like the negative reviews and why it's most negatively re reviewed. One of the most negatively reviewed uh, like industry as a whole is, is honestly because balls are getting dropped and there's, there isn't a, uh, a systemized structure and templated, you know, format of how we're not only like handling an estimate, but also delivering on the, what we've, we've said we were going to. Um, and I think we argue that it's like, well, every home is a little bit different, but it's, your roof is a roof is a roof and you know it's like and there's different nuances to that right that never every project goes in there but windows and and most projects are pretty straightforward that you can template out your estimate and template out your from a sales perspective but also in the in the ordering and all those other additional pieces down the road so i i love that um from that portion of it as well because again if you have to do it once why not template it and you can always iterate on that template and improve your improve your system, improve your structure for the next time you go through it. And then, so you're just building on that versus having to redo it all over again or go find the email that you sent a bunch of times ago. So, Right. And I'm also, you know, for my teams, I'm creating a cadence, right? Because, you know, you might have seven different sales guys, but they all might have seven different things they would say. We want to create a cadence of what exactly you should say and portray at each, each of the phase so that it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It's our branding. Right. So, I mean, it takes some time to really fine tune your cadence to have the, 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 the right precise message you want to deliver at that stage of your workflow. But uh, you better believe over time you're going to have a well built out cadence that the entire company uh, can really represent your business in the right way. Yeah, well, it's just it creates stability, it creates structure. You know, mm -hmm. and I think ultimately creates a heck of a lot more peace as you're running a <laughs> small business too. You don't lose somebody on your team and lose all the, you know, the, you know, how it was all set up in the first place. You're able to kind of start building. This is a good building block to kind of, you know, create foundation for your business and the structure. So um, let's talk about kind of customized pricing for for different locations and even distributors and all that kind of stuff. So tell me about kind of the back end of, of kind of integration on that side of things. That was a question you got kind of pr presented. And I'm kind of curious, you know, where, what, what does that look like um, in context there? Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about our integration with the suppliers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sure. So like SRS distribution, you know, they're, they're really, 
making their way to being number one in the industry, right? There's, mm-hmm. there's, there's, uh, there's the top three, but they're making a strong push. They're doing really good things, but being able to connect with your suppliers and have integration again, redundancies and, uh, price changes and all that stuff that's happening on their end. We want to give the contract the ability to plug in to their live up-to-date pricing uh, for a particular branch. Branches might have different pricing so that when they're doing their estimating, they have direct access to the right pricing. So they're not having to really adjust anything after the fact and saying, oh my God, you know, I had, you know, I put the wrong pricing in from this branch and now, you know, I'm losing money here. Right. Um, or on the other end of the sp- spectrum, as you're ordering that material, we want to automate that process so that when you did when the contractor did that estimate, they're going to have or ha- have the ability to push that into a material list where there's no human error happening because it's basically reading what was in the estimate and then reformatting it, how it needs to read for the supplier. And then you're able to shoot that out to your local branch. And, you know, I didn't lose anything along the way or, you know, order the wrong materials for a particular job. So, again, automating that process, the integration with the suppliers that we have is it's really super helpful uh, for the contractor, for the supplier. And it's really creating accountability um, and no human error. Right. Well, I think, yeah, it protects your profit margins across the board there, too, and not being surprised uh, about your profitability about jobs here either. I think that was a, something that I saw a lot of companies struggle with at the, even during the pandemic here is when price fluctuations were changing and they were getting price updates on a consistent basis. And they had estimates out over, you know, from the past, it, 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 it you know, you lose profitability. And when you're just moving forward, you need to have that stuff structured. So you're not making sure you're not losing money, number one, but you're maintaining your profitable margins. Um, and I think everyone can feel the pain of a project that like, you just break even on or yes. or after you pay all those sales reps and you pay everything, you're like, that was my that God. worth it? You know, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And um, and so, yeah, making sure that you actually get that stuff templated out. And I think, again, with technology today, these suppliers are catching on that. Like if they don't integrate with your CRM system and with your system that's actually managing these projects, Mm. they're just going to, they're missing out on the business because you're just, the simplicity of being able to order and push through that order is, it it should be easy. And right now, if you're having an email or call in an order or all that kind of stuff, it should be just a point and click uh, at this point. So seamless, but no, yep. Absolutely. So let's talk about kind of the the automation of kind of continued automation follow up. You know, when it comes to kind of SMS and email communication, we touched on a little bit with um, you know at the beginning with kind of workflows. But let's let's tie it in here with kind of the homeowner communication throughout this process here. So again, this is the number one industry that's you know complaint about complaints with the Better Business Bureau and and sure. uh, you know satisfaction in general how does like automating communication and what does that look like what have you seen like companies do really well in this you know automation we overall with sms or email or calls or you know what what do you like what what's some workflows that you would be proud to share with everybody yeah, I mean, they, they, they just vary so much, right? But, I mean, definitely having the ability to, again, create that cadence through email, through workflow, super helpful. Um, text right now, the automation isn't there yet unless you're connecting a company called Hatch. That's another one of our integrations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are working on some back-end uh, features and functionality. So, you know, that text is actually going through that workflow as well. Mm-hmm. But, um you know, I mean, it's really up to the contractor, but again, we can really help you build that thing out um, so that it's properly following up at the times that you need it to. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the, I, I think the customer experience, I've kind of, I was really pushed it last year. And I think it's even more this year as we kind of go through all these webinars and, and week after week here is customer experience is the, is the new norm. I think we said it in the last webinar last week is like people want to purchase 
in the same type of experience and the ease of purchase they do with any other thing that they purchase out there. So if it's an easy to order my groceries on my app right now <laughs> and to communicate with the driver who's delivering my meal over to me, like we expect the same level of customer service and the same level of communication and over communication. I, I got an order through DoorDash the other day and not only did it message me when it like confirmed my order, but then it also messaged me and said, hey, the driver showed up at the restaurant and then, hey, they're on their way to your house and then they're getting close to your house and, hey, they arrived at your house. And then, mm -hmm. then another picture of like it, it's at your door, like that's over communication. They didn't need to send that many portions in, in workflows of communication here to me. But honestly, it was like it built trust. It mm -hmm. said, hey, they showed up. Hey, it's, you know, it's on the way. Like and all those pieces of it just build trust in the customer experience. And like, that's what homeowners really want is if you can notify them at every single stage of their project, like right. we can all just go swipe and get rid of that text message, but at least, Hey, we know. And, and if you, if they don't know, there's, I think there's something missing. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend you over communicate either through that integration with hatch SMS being the number one way that people, you know, are going to see those messages, but, emails, phone calls um, today. It's like, that's, that's, that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. No, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, customers expect to use technology and no one is really going to complain about you over communicating. But we'll complain about you under communicating. So mm -hmm. uh, the more, the better and uh, the happier the customer experience is, the more likelihood they're going to you know recommend you to someone. So that's exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, two-way SMS is still like, for businesses is so like, still uh, a, a struggle point. But I think mm -hmm. Hatch does a good job of that, being able to do that. They're one of our partners here as well. So if you're not using SMS right now in the lead or, or customer progress, some people are using it just for like lead engagement, but it really should be a project management like tool that is is triggered there too. Um nice. But it, yeah, it should be every piece of that. So let's let's talk about just kind of the visibility. I think that's, you know, overall, you know, I think we we can get in the weeds of the workflows and building out systems and building out workflows. But ultimately, you need to have visibility into where every lead is at, where every project is at um, here in that process. And then um, I think one cool thing about job progress is where your crews are at here too. So tell, tell us a little about kind of like from a visual standpoint, from a reporting standpoint, kind of what what's the, what does job progress do, and what's the benefit of you know why every company should be doing that? Yeah, I mean, it, our mobile app is really focused on Apple or Android. Uh, it's for field use, right? So sales folks, production manager, all that good stuff. Um, but it also gives you a, a business owner the ability to understand where your folks are at, what they're doing, who's on that project. Um, we do have. Um, user tracking too. So, you know, you can clock, they can be clocking in and clocking out. You can see where they're at. They're not clocking in from, you know, McDonald's and they're supposed to be on a job. Um, you know, so just that, that real time, where are my workers at? What's everyone doing? What project are they on? Uh, that mobile app really gives you that, that, that ability. Um, now from a user standpoint, you can really drill down to what, you know, those individuals can see what they can do and what they can access. But, you know, having that, that type of tool, um, will give you again, the ability as a business owner to understand where people are at, how long they've been on jobs for a day, a week, a month, a year, whatever, um, that helps you with your profit and loss. Right. So, and also helps you understand that you got people out there that are, that are uh, that are on jobs and not just really putzing around and getting things done. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that gives a layer of accountability to, you know, it depends on your your specific trade. You know, how much you outsource that to a subcontractor, right? Mm -hmm. But I think there's been, I think more, and I hope this is the trend that we'll continue to see is that in different industries and different trades of, of kind of bringing those subcontractors in house and actually having crews. And if you have a, uh, a project manager showing up at every project or even having a crew or repair crew or whoever's going to be on your team, actually being able to manage where they're at and how they're spending their time, it, it allows you to not only 
know where they're at from a micromanaging standpoint. Like we hope that we hire good people and we don't have to micromanage that they're at that McDonald's or at the job site. But mm-hmm. it also it it just ultimately shows you what their what like their capacity is at the end of the day also, which I love about that. It's like you know that it's gonna take this long to do a project. Well it's like that also goes back and dictates your margins of how much you should be charging knowing what labor is actually necessary to get that project done too so from a timekeeping and from a from a location standpoint i think it's great to know just knowing where your resources are at so you know where you're able to you know move up or down there too or or expect so i think that's fantastic so um hey lester i'm curious just where i i've been asking this question a few times i didn't prep you on this so um uh, so you've been in you're in software you, you're, you're part of Leap. You're a part of job progress. Where do you see, without giving secrets away, where do you see, like, really technology um, and it's fitting in, like, with we got AI that's in motion now. We've got all that kind of stuff that's out there. Like, technology is ever expanding. Where do you see the industry going when it comes to technology? And, uh, yeah, yeah we'll go it's, it's really a staple. It's, again, I from the beginning uh i'm really only scratching the surface i've been here since 2017 um to see how far it's come from from then to now uh has really opened my eyes to how fast the industry is really absorbing this and again it's not because you know um you need to do it but you must do it right so uh i like to compare it almost to kind of you know the the uh the the flip phone versus a smartphone Right. So, you know, there was a lot of guys in the beginning uh, when I started that looked at, you know, job progress. And it was like, ah, it looks a little too difficult to use. It costs too much. All that good stuff. Right. Um, Those same guys today would never go back to that process that they had before because they did take that take that leap again, if you will. But um, so, again, flip phone and a smartphone. Um, you can't go back, right? It's just, you can communicate much better with your family, sending pictures and text and group communications and all that stuff that one would just really take for granted. But uh, if you try to put a flip phone in someone's hand now, they just could not go back to it. So that's what's happening with, you know, Excel files and spreadsheets and all this stuff that it, it did help you grow your business, right? But there is a better way. And we all have these phones right in the palms of our hands, and we need to use those to our advantage, uh, especially in business. Um, it's a lot more powerful than we think, but, you know, it's only now uh, gaining a tremendous amount of traction with AI and all these other things. Because, you know, I go back to SRS, one of the suppliers that are integrated with us. I mean, they had the ability to take all the previous orders that you had in the past and generate really a best suggested macro or template of things based off the type of job that you're doing. And that's reading just tens of thousands of line items and giving you the answer to what you need. (laughs) It's really mind blowing. Right. So now I did, now you're telling me eventually I won't even have to create a macro. I can just basically, it's going to do it for me. Yeah, pretty much. So um, the industry is really just getting started. Um, I really like the position that we're in. Um, we're helping these contractors tremendously, but there's, there's evolutions to it too, right? It's not that, you know, oh, AI came out. So now we're all supposed to just run to that corner. Like, no, there's steps and there's stages and there's phases and you just, your, your workflow has got to grow with you. Your tech stacks also got to fall in line with that as well. So, um, we're going to see, you know, new things, new features, new products. And uh, I think at the end of the day, overall, we want to just help that contractor be uh, the best they can be. So um, the the use of technology, it's there. Uh, it's how we piece it together and how we're able to absorb it. And then uh, that's where we're going to see companies really start to scale. Yeah, that's awesome. So I think, yeah, I think step one is obviously adopting technology, period. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and jumping in that side of things, I think the, uh, which is awesome. I think, yeah, obviously job progress is a great first step. And if you haven't, don't have anything right now, move into that window. If you already have something as kind of the upgrade uh, here too, to be able to see the full picture of, of that project. So uh, Lester, I so appreciate your time today and want to honor your time. 
how can people reach out to you or even learn more about job progress um, yeah. here? What's, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, no, absolutely. Visit either one of our sites, you know, uh, jobprogress.com or leap to digital.com. Uh, you're going to see kind of the, the, the companies coming together a little bit more. So um, you can reach out, schedule on any one of our websites. We have a fantastic group of uh, sales professionals that are looking forward to doing a demo for you. Um, and what I always tell folks, you know, that jump on a demo, we're not really trying to sell you, but really show you what we have. Uh, and it's either going to make sense for you or not. So definitely reach out to one of our websites. You can also always, you know, email me directly at L Morris, M O R R I S at jobprogress.com. And I make sure I get you on the counter with one of our, uh, one of our sales professionals that looking forward to doing de a demo for you. Thank you so much for everybody. We'll have a great rest of the day. Good to see you, Sean. Thanks for having me.